Hi, Polly. This is Karen Loshbaugh with Art to Ride, and I'm covering for Will while he's in Europe giving his riding clinics. And I understand this is Knight. He's a off-the-track thoroughbred. And it seems like you've had uh, quite a history with him, but maybe you're getting to the other side of it. I can help you out a little bit here. Uh, he needs to go much, much lower and longer in the neck. When you get him to soften like that, now you need to give forward and see if he'll seek the contact. That'll also help you with his forwardness too. But if you look at his top line, he's going to need to go way, way down there before he'll start to activate it. You can see the hollowness behind the saddle and also the peakedness of the hips. So he's going to need to get way down there before he'll start to connect and light up that top line. The other thing I want to mention is that uh, to check your saddle fit, you are very much behind the leg, what we would call a chair seat. You are pushing down on your stirrups and forward a little bit. So if you let your knee soften and bend, your leg may stay underneath you a little bit better. The other thing, and I can't tell whether he's shot or not, but he also possibly has that look of a horse on eggshells, eggshells where their feet are a little tender and they'll often get quick about that. So just, you might want to rule out both of those things. Um, Peter Horbin Saddlery, I know, is in uh, Australia. I don't know how close he is to you, but that could be a good reference. There you go, now you're getting him lower. So soften and then try to get his nose out as you send him forward. There, good. Every time his head raises like that, just widen your hand so he can't get out of the contact. So what you're showing him is this is a little harder when he raises his head and then you show him how much easier it is when he lowers it. So you, you just give and soften your hand when he lowers. Now you can always remind him to stay soft in the jaw though. But you need to maintain contact when the head raises and when you're riding with a long rein, the best way to do that is just widen your hand so you can still feel both sides of his mouth. See like right there, widen your, uh, widen your hands and just passively resist. It's not a pulling back, it's just you stop your hands. You just don't give forward. And then just wait, there you go, good. Now let's see what happens when you go into the walk. There, see how he wants to duck behind the bridle a little bit? Uh, that may happen when you're trying to soften him, but then your goal is to get his nose back out. Oh, you gave up, try again. Yeah, just if you could just widen your hands and create some contact there. The walk is where you should be perfecting this because that's where you teach the horse these things. And so if you can't get it in the walk, you're more likely not going to get it in the trot. So really do a lot of walk work and a lot of leg yields in that stretch once you get in down there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're saying, but... And if you see his confirmation, he's a little straight behind. So it's not helping him a lot. His confirmation doesn't really allow him to swing under as in a lot of horses, but you can certainly improve it. That's what classical foundation training is all about. Any horse, any breed, any confirmation can be improved by training this way because once you get the back engaged, they can be better athletes. So right there. Just, ah, there you go. Like that. Like that. Now, if he comes out of that, you just widen your hands and start all over again. It's really important that you release. See, now, you, you started out trotting when he was really hollow. So you're not really setting yourself up to win. Better to get him really deep in the stretch. See how hollow he gets there and he braces upwards? So before I would even trot this horse, I would get him really, really working over his back. So as I suggested... Get back into the walk work until you have it perfected there. And I think that'll help you with the forwardness too because when he, yeah, just ignore that little stuff that he does there. I think it'll go away when you get him to find this um, more comfortable position to be in. You see, when he softens there, then you should be giving with your hands. Just ignore that kind of stuff. Just keep him working. And like I said, just get him a little more comfortable. I think he'll be much happier. Because when he gets his head really low like that, it'll be easier for him to carry you. 
If it helps, do take a look at some of these other videos that have been posted because a lot of people deal with the same thing and they've absolutely been able to transform their horses. It's so exciting and very, very cool to see. But we do have to be patient. He spent a lot of time doing things the wrong way and it's going to take some time to get you to uh, get his back, his uh, top line lit up. And then you'll see that his gait will get better. Because every time you get him a little bit lower, he just at least gets a little bit slower, and then you can work on getting him a little bit deeper. But I think you find if you find, get him in a more comfortable position, he's going to be more willing to go forward, because your comment was that he was uh, difficult to stay forward. Every time I just give. It's hard to give on a rushy horse, but you got to help him engage the top line so he can balance himself a little better, and they balance themselves by being able to swing under better. Now, is this a, you, your other question was about him as a, a dressage career. Now, he's not a naturally gifted mover, but that doesn't mean you can't improve him immensely, and that's why we do wish that there were dressage shows out there that judged more by what you've been able to do, uh, develop with what you have, because all no horses are built with different physicalities. But it's how you train them that can be so important. You see these really naturally gifted, big moving horses that ha really haven't even been trained. They just kind of get held into a frame. Oh, let's see the stretch. Let's see the stretch. This is where you should be asking. So stretch him way down in the walk and then try your trot and see if you can't keep him there. And it can be very helpful to come back to the walk and reiterate what you wanted him to do. So he starts to understand what the aid means and how to soften the jaw and pull. And then when you give, you want him to really seek that contact. But bravo to you for taking him on. Uh, it sounds like he's been quite the project and you've stuck with it and really taken his, uh, his needs in consideration. And it looks like he's got a lovely place to live now and I'm sure he's much happier here. But just right there, see how he's just very hollow? And that's what gives that um, inability to really swing under and engage his back. I think you can do it, you're really close. Every time he's like this, widen your hands and just passively resist as you send him forward into the contact. And I think you would get him softening and then starting to seek the contact. You're close. You've got some of it. Um, you've got a nice separation of the seat and the hands. You would be helped a lot more being in a better position with the saddle. So anyway, I hope that helped and keep at it. I think he's worth spending the time on. He doesn't look lame or anything, and I think you can make him a very enjoyable mount. And it would be fun to show him. Uh, he's not a showstopper, especially in the way they judge horses these days in dressage shows. But maybe it's a little different in Australia. But good luck with him, Polly. I hope that helped. Bye.